And hello, everybody. We're back for another Minecraft episode. Here, here's what we're going to do. Since I kind of get lost in all my wor Minecraft worlds with the survival mode on, let's just do, uh, let's just do creative and then, you know what I mean? In the creative mode and let's just go there. I think that'll be easier. You know what? And, uh, because you know why? I'm sick of dealing with you know, people who are trying to obstruct and get in the way and add weight and add complications. Like, I'm tired of it. it just, they, I'm tired of that, okay? So let's just do creative mode, all right? And then there's nobody getting in the way, adding complications, putting on the brakes unnecessarily just because just they're jealous, right? All the mind... I'm not talking about anybody in real life. I'm talking about the zombies. I'm talking about the spiders and the creepers. They, you know, they, they're... Okay, that's what we're talking about. Nobody in real life. Okay? Anyways, guys. Welcome to Minecraft. We're starting a new, new planet. Starting over. Now, just a quick message to everyone out there. I guess you guys are kind of like, you know, you guys are in in pain, right? Well, guys, you, you know what? <laughs> you, you, you know what, guys? Can I just say something to you, to each and every one of you out there? What have you guys been putting me through all summer? What, what was that called? A psychological torture, Jeff. <laughs> of course. Yes, it was, wasn't it? So then... Maybe you guys deserve this a little bit. You think so? And I'm not trying to be rude, but you know what I mean? Like, can we be adults and just, like, admit that? All right, I, th I think some of us can. And some of us can't. Uh, cannot, right? So, okay. So, good. The, the, the people with a semblance of a human heart are feeling bad, and you guys are going through some pain. You know, like my aunt and my mom, especially. Okay, but look, here's the thing. This pain is temporary. Okay, because what Jesus Jesus just put me through something. I was a little bit disobedient today. He kind of put he basically asked me to not eat anything. He didn't say it, but he kind of made me feel it. But I, and I did anyway. Like I was like, oh man, there's a piece of bread that I made last night, and I ate it. And you know. I, I I feel bad because it's like, yeah, I've done this before. This is not the first time I've done this. And it's it's one of those things where it feels good in the moment. Like, oh, there's that piece of bread and then it, it tastes good and okay. It doesn't feel like there's any immediate consequences. But then, hold on, I ate that piece of bread, and then now, all of a sudden, I'm not able to speak as well. So for whatever reason, you know, eating, for me, kind of is a detriment to my speaking ability. For whatever reason, my brain isn't able to come up with words all that or, or, that that quickly anymore. And I'm foggy, and I, I don't speak as well. So what's interesting is that... Jesus has shown me this over the summer, meaning food is is kind of my biggest, it, it, and you guys have noticed this, it's my biggest weakness, just because it's so, it, it makes you feel good, and it tastes good, and right, but the problem is, is that give it 20 minutes, and that good feeling that you had while you were eating is gone, and then now all you're left with is a foggy brain. And you can't really get, you can't really speak that well anymore. So great. Now I have to go take another cold shower. Like that's so Jesus had me take three cold showers. And they were all really involuntary. Like it what it was not easy today. Yesterday it was easy. Today was not. I was like, oh man, I do not want to do it. And it, it reminded me of what Jesus put me through in Hawaii. And and right before Hawaii. And um Well, which means I, I think I think I know what's going on out there. Is you guys are seeing me do these cold showers, and then now you want to compete or something, right? Is that what it is? Well, I, I mean, okay, but 
guys it's not a competition i just want to be able to be on the radio like i, I need i need enter, i'm trying to get a job you know what i mean like i just need i need i'm not trying to compete with anybody i just don't have any energy i have add and i'm not allowed to take meth you know what i mean like i can't take vivance anymore so i i that's where my energy used to come from but turns out it just makes you um well it just makes you like absent it, like emotionally it, and i i don't want to be that i want to be able to uh feel it, things and it, so it's the the cold showers even though they you know it's 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 painful and not painful it's just not always the number one thing you want to do and but the thing is is it's it's instant energy and you feel better you it's it's like ha instant happiness and it's so but it comes it's not a drug it's a it's a sacrifice so but you get instant gratification out of it it just it's just a little painful a little uncomfortable um and uh i i don't want people thinking i'm trying to like one up everybody again that's not i i mean i i wasn't even trying to i don't mean to say i don't even mean to say again i never tried to one up anybody i was just being obedient do you guys honestly think I wanted to take a million cold showers back in July? Like, no. Of course not. What is with this? The floating blocks in the middle of the thing looks like a foot. All right, whatever. So, um, so I, I okay. I don't, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. But what, what I'm trying to, what I am trying to say is that I have learned my lesson today. And I'm done being disobedient. Okay. Because I have been a little disobedient, especially with food. And I got to be careful because, I mean, that's what got us here in the first place. Disobedience with, with uh, food, right? From, you know, the the fruit and the, and right? So, all right. Let, let's not, let's not undo all of the progress. Like, let's, let's not undo all of it. No thanks. Okay. Like, we, we put a lot of effort into all this. And, uh. I'll do, I'll do my best, okay? And the thing is, is I don't, you know, I'm, I'm running low on, on food here, guys. Like, Jesus is having me basically clear out all my food. Like, it's gone. Like, all my stuff. It's amazing. It was amazing. Like, the timing yesterday, for whatever reason, everything just sort of happened to run out. Like, I ran out of everything. I, I used up a lot of my, um, well, first of all, my, first of all, my, sh my shampoo bottle emptied out. I just emptied that out yesterday in, the, in this morning. And then a big bar of soap that I had, like, left over from Hawaii, that was also gone. So, like, it was just weird. Like, okay, so those two things gone and then I go into the refrigerator and then Jesus is having me sort of finish everything that was in the fridge. Um, and you know, the milk and then the, uh, there's some taco seasoning and then there's some other, other things that Jesus just had me complete, just complete the, you know, and then in my smoothie mix and the acai juice or whatever it was. It, so, oh yeah, that's cool. It just gives you all the stuff up front. That's awesome. But see, here's the uh, oh snow block. Well, so anyways, guys. So the the thing is, is I just believe that we're at the end of of the begin of the training period here. Th this is the end of the training period for both you and I. Like this was just as much training for me as it was for you, guys. Okay, so I know all the neighbors here are pretty distraught, you know, but guys, you've been treating me like garbage all summer. And, you know, you were the reason you started treating me like that is because you thought you were better than me and smarter than me and, and right, more mature than me, all that stuff. All right, I'm not saying you're not, but the point is, is you haven't been acting like you're more mature than me. So obviously that's not true. Okay, so... Look, the, we need to just put our pride aside, okay? And what we need to do is just figure out how to get people to this awesome place called heaven. And it's not 
earth. It's not Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley, I, I, I know you guys think it's heaven on earth. It's not. It is not. Okay? And I, I you know what? That zombies weren't supposed to. Oh no, they do exist in creative mode. They just don't attack you. Um, but uh, so, anyways, okay. So guys, can can we just honestly just stop with all this? Stop, stop with all this. Hey, we need to prove Jeff it, uh, it wrong. We need to prove. I'm not. Who's? Why are you trying to do that? Why do you have to do that? I mean, what, what, I, you, okay, you guys, you guys understand why we don't, we, we can, we can look elsewhere for, for things to worry about, right? And I don't think I'm one of the things. And look, here's what I'm saying. Oh, there's another portal to hell. <laughs> Great. Uh, so, so, uh, okay, so, um, so I guess the question out there to you guys is I want the pain to end. And I think you guys do too. See, the thing is, you guys, I was, see, you guys now can empathize with me. Um, with my pain, right? What I was going through this summer, right? You can empathize with it now. Before, you couldn't, right? But now you can. You understand what that feeling of reputational loss is and you don't like it. You don't like being exposed. You don't like it right? It doesn't feel good. Does it? No, it doesn't. Right? Oh, you know, you don't know how many people know this or don't know this. Yeah, it's, it's torture, right? I go, no, dude, does this person know that I'm doing this? They, right? It's very uncomfortable. Okay? It's called reputational loss. That's why gossip is so dangerous. Because you're hurting somebody. And, and, and trying to destroy their reputation, you're hurting somebody, right? So this is probably, I'm assuming, what you guys were doing to me all summer. Trying to destroy my reputation on purpose, you know? I mean, I was certainly was not. I don't care. I just want to tell the truth. It's just you guys were not telling the truth about me because you had a bias and you wanted a result, right? You wanted me to go away. And... That's, see, that is not telling the truth, and that is not acceptable. All right? So now you guys know what it feels like to not have control over what people think about you. That's it, right? It's not fun, is it? So I get it. You would love for me to take it down. And, right? The lady next door would love for me to take it down. And I want to take it down as well. All the all the videos that I uploaded previous to this. I would love to take it down. And maybe there's a path to doing that. Maybe if I start seeing some positivity out there from you. And a little bit of, well, I don't know. I mean, a little bit of um, reciprocation, a little bit, possibly, something, you know, but I don't expect it. But basically what I'm saying is, is that's the only path to get these videos deleted. Okay. So if you're not going to do that, then the videos are unfortunately going to have to stay up. Okay. But if we do start seeing some positivity out of you guys, man, that would be awesome. Because then we could get going and right, I, we could uh, really start doing what Jesus wants us to do on this planet. Now, again, I don't, I already know the future of the planet and Jesus, unfortunately, is going to have to destroy it first. Okay, we already know that, that there's not, like, I, I must have not done a very good job because nobody's really going to be all that pumped about this, so. Jesus is going to have to, you know, rain down fire and fury and all the garbage that's going to go on. I don't, I'm not excited about it, but, but the point is, is there's a lot of people out there who aren't going to be too pumped about this. But the, but the bad news is that they don't have a choice. 
So it's either they choose this or then they they go to hell, man. Uh, that's Those are the two options. And I, I don't want that to be the two options. But those are the two options. And I unfortunately don't have any control over that. So... Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. The truth is, I don't know what to say because I feel like anything I say is always just not taken seriously. So it doesn't even matter, guys. It doesn't, it, the truth is it doesn't matter what I say because you guys don't listen to me anyway. So it just doesn't matter. So, but I'm, I'm telling you guys that basically it is a binary decision. You either, you either choose this or you don't, and then you're going to go to hell. Like, it's not, it's not that Jesus wants you to send you to hell. He just wants the chaos to stop on this planet. Do you want to be a part of the peace or do you want to be a part of the chaos? Which one? Jesus is, he votes for peace. So do I. I want peace as well. Which one do you guys want? Chaos or peace? All right. Well, unfortunately, you guys have chosen chaos, and that's what it's going to be. All right. I can't help it, guys. I tried with this. Yeah. All right. It, it was an impossible task for a human. I mean, guys, I failed at it. Am I wrong? I failed, obviously, right? If I hadn't failed, um, I, you know, I would probably have a job at this point, right? But no, I made myself unemployable. Like, it's, it's that bad, right? So, it's, right, it's that bad where I not only can't, I mean, I could go walk dogs, guys, but I can't, that's not enough, I can't make enough money for that, doing that. Um, so, I, I will not get any real job or career i can't like any any you know a traditional job it, it will not happen um and it's okay i've accepted it i don't want that i i, I don't i don't believe um i don't feel like i'm gonna be playing minecraft forever but i mean i'm gonna be doing something i mean my my thing is i kind of want to do minecraft in real life I mean, I do enjoy doing this. Like, this is fun, but it's just, I don't know. I would rather, honestly, learn the skills in real life. The the carpentry skills and, and working with other people and stuff like that. That is something I would like to do. And they're saying, Jeff, to be a carpenter. Guys, I can't. You, you can't. It's too late for me. Because you have to be a journeyman or be a, an apprentice. And the, who's going to... I need a certification. I'm sure I need to do like something. I don't feel like paying for a certification or something. What is it? Who knows what it is? All right. They, they want people with experience, not a 34 year old who doesn't know what he's doing with a hammer. You know what I mean? They, they're not going to hire me for anything. So it's, I guess I'm like, honestly, kind of like I'm, I'm not in a good position here. Right, and Jesus is telling me, hey, got money coming. I don't see it, though. I don't see it. I mean, I know he's never wrong. It's just, it. I'm a, if I'm trying to be a saint, I've never heard of a rich saint. They're always dirt poor. So I, that's me. And then where, what does that mean? Where? So what, I have to live in a tent? I don't know. All right, because I'm not going to be able to live here forever. You, I'm going to say something that makes you guys mad, and then you're going to start up the eviction process. Right? So, I, I got to get out of here. I got to figure out a way to something. But only Jesus can figure it out. I know he has the solution. And we're waiting for something to happen. All right, so don't... I'm not worried about me, but what, what I am worried about is is you guys and you know not really understanding what this is you still kind of don't you still don't and i and i'm wondering why did i did i not do a good enough job explaining what this is do, do i need to do a better job explaining what this whole project is 
or do or or i mean because look here's what it is let me let me try to sympathize with you guys for a second what it sounds like to me is you think i'm just some kid who you know is mad as at his ex-boss for not paying him enough and he's J Jeff is just using this uh, this you know he's taking advantage of what Elon was graciously trying to uh you know give Jeff an opportunity and Jeff it, took advantage of it now and all he's doing right cuz Elon is of, of course pr probably played the victim right talking about how how mean I was and stuff like that well look you know what you guys have treated me really bad over this for this uh these few years here and i i'm i'm sorry if i i get a little like snarky but you know what elon yelled at me more than i ye ever yelled at him and it was always unprovoked when he yelled at me it was unprovoked when i yelled at him it was years of psychological torture <laughs> The years of psychological torture. He just caught me watching YouTube one time and instantly started yelling at me while I was working one time. You, you see what I'm saying? So, so Elon and I have a long history of yelling at each other. It's just mine is a little bit... I, it, I had a little more restraint than Elon did. And a little more patience, even though it finally did ran run out. You, you know what I mean? So Elon can talk about me being the mean guy all day, except who who deserves to be yelled at more? Me for watching YouTube one time when I should have been coding and <laughs> when I should have been coding a Chrome extension that was never going to be used anyway, right, Elon? Uh or is it more just that after years of psychological torment and torture and gaslighting and talking about me behind my back and, you know, making it seem like, you know, a trip actions was going to come to Boston and psychologically messing with me when it came to that? Uh, right there on LinkedIn, right there, everybody. Thank you so much, Elon. You guys are the best. So me yelling at Elon about that is wrong. But him yelling at me about watching YouTube one time. Well, Jeff, it's he's your boss. You, he can do whatever he wants. Okay. All right. Okay. You, you guys get it, right? Okay. Look. Here's the thing. Is that I, I want this to end more than you. More than anybody, right? So... The thing is, is in order to make that happen, I have to be exceptionally obedient because you guys do not want me to succeed. Guys, not even my own parents want me to succeed with this. So I have nobody on my side with this, okay? You guys don't want heaven on earth. You want you, well, you what you what, you don't see the thing is with you guys is that you think heaven on earth is well. I don't know what you think heaven on what what do you think heaven on earth is? You, where everyone's holding hands and um, it's like guys we, we the hippies did that and they didn't get anything done. You you know what I mean like they. Meaning their lifestyle was such that, hey man, just wait around and don't do anything. You know, they just give up and just like that's like don't listen to that. And then and then the, you you that's not that's not heaven on earth. Heaven on earth, it's kind of like what we're doing now. It's about hard work, right? But it, the work you guys is different from work that you think of as work you think of work as project management budgets and planning and that see guys see to, to me that just sounds like a bunch of um you know a bunch of people who are quite frankly wasting their time 
with Jira and organization. And like, look, guys, the 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 thing is, is is that if you're with Jesus, He does all that for you. You don't need a burn down chart when you're with Jesus. You don't need to worry about any of that garbage. Do, do, guys, do you realize how much time is wasted on that? And, and by the way, the people who are the most mad at me in this neighborhood, are I guarantee you, they're project managers. They are. They are. They are. Because what I'm saying is that they're not necessary. And I don't hear any counter arguments from them out there. All I hear is a bunch of coughing. So that kind of says that they agree with me. They're, but they're mad about it. <laughs> so, so. I, I mean, I know that doesn't help. I need, I, okay. But look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. But if you guys didn't agree with me subconsciously, then you'd love me. You would love me just like all the people who code computers love me. The people who code computers love me. The people who learned instruments love me. The people who uh, are recording engineers love me. All those people love me. The project managers don't. The managers don't. The directors don't. The CEOs don't. Don't you think that's a little telling, guys? That the le it seems like the less people do out there, the more you hate me. The less necessary, perceivably, the less necessary you are, the more you hate me. So, so we need to kind of look at it. And when I say necessary, I mean, how much effort have we honestly put into making sure that we're doing exactly what God wills us to do? If the answer is I haven't, then you're probably a project manager somewhere. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, because Jesus would never have you be a project manager. He would have you... He would have you do what you love to do in project management. I can tell you is not it. I'm a project manager, but I also work on the project. Like it's, you can't, it's, you can't, it's, you see what I'm saying? Like you can do both. You, we don't need a separate job for it. Someone who's just acting as your fake boss, except the person's younger than you. <laughs> and they don't know anything about what you're doing. So, I mean, I, I don't, it's, I, it's, no offense, it's poor Sammy. Sammy, Sammy, she was the best, she was the best. Sammy, I'm, this doesn't include you, all right? She was a nice project manager, but I know Sammy is, that she has far more talents than uh, project management, I can tell you that. So, so I, what I would say is, just be honest. See, Sammy is like agreeing with me. She's like, yeah, Jeff, you're right. I'm done being a project manager. I'm going to go do what I do and then manage that project. Exactly. Do do your project and then manage it. And then you become a semi-project manager part-time. And then the rest of the time, you're you're doing what you do. It's, and, then, and then you don't hate me anymore. You know what I mean? So I think that's the answer is we just got to figure out. So let's... Continue to manage projects. I'm not saying to throw out your organization skills. It does take skill. Just not skills that that we should be, you know, uh, only doing during the week. Like, only organizing. Like, that's all you do. Like, uh, maybe, you know what I mean? Let's, let's organize... Uh, a, a community get together or organize, you know, like it's something that, that brings at least a little love to the planet, not making sure Jeff gets all his tickets done in Jira and then telling his boss about it. If he doesn't, <laughs> you know, like that's, that's not helping. That's not helping. You know what I mean? That's just kind of like, it's perpetuating the devil's world of slavery and, Right, the people above you are very disappointed in your performance, Jeff. Oh, yeah? Then how come they don't know how to code? Then maybe they should come down and teach me how to code if I'm not doing it well enough. And I, you say that, and then you never hear anything back from them ever again. You know what I mean? Because they can't. Oh, yeah, shoot, Jeff, you're right. If I'm going to complain about your performance, I better have some suggestions for you. And if I don't know how to code, then... I won't have any suggestions. 
So it's it's just you can't. That's not that's it's not the world because then what does it do? It just creates pride in that person. Oh, like I'm better than them because I don't know how to code. Uh I mean I don't mean to be rude, but like you got that backwards, buddy. Like it's your software and you don't know how to use it or, or program or or do anything. It but I do, and you decided not to give me a raise this year. What do you think I'm gonna do? I you know what I mean? Like I it's. It, it's I it, it, <laughs> no. <laughs> this is the position. This is the very weak position you guys put yourselves in. These tech executives, these tech executives, very rarely do they know how to code, or if they do, they're hacks. So, again, that open. I mean, uh. Guys, running a business is not hard. It's just not. It's just, but it's just, you just make, you just sell your product until you, until, until you make profit. But the thing is, is you guys sell your product, but you never make profit. So I guess you're really not even good at that. Oh boy. <laughs> Whoops. Whoopsie daisy. I was trying to, I was so, oh, see guys, it was just low hanging fruit. I didn't mean to say that. I was trying to be nicer on the podcast this time. Oh man, I'm sorry. No, I feel bad. I feel bad. Like, look, 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 look. Okay, look. Okay. I know you guys are in pain. You are, aren't you? Well, okay. Again, you know what? I mean, I'm not trying to be rude, but you know what? Welcome to the club. Okay. You guys have been trying to like dominate me and control me all summer. And like now, you don't like this feeling, do you? No. Okay. So, look. Why does it, it looks like a vortex? Let's go down. Let's go check this out. Um. So. Whoa. All right. Anyways, guys, I don't want to cause you guys any more pain than necessary. However, we need to start seeing some movement out there. And I'm not. I know you're not going to listen to me, but Jesus will make it clear to you guys that it's time to get going out there. Okay, and if you guys want me to potentially take these videos down, I'm not promising I will, but I'm saying there may be a path to me taking him down. Like Jesus might, might you know, if we're seeing some good behavior out there, some positive behavior right there, everybody, well then maybe we'll be taking these things down. All right. Okay, because I mean, you know, my mom and my aunt Pat, we love them. Okay. But, uh, Aunt Pat, we weren't all that supportive of me, were we? No, we weren't, okay? Mom, mom especially, okay? I mean, Mom, I love you, but, uh, you, you and Pat gossip, gossiping about me behind my back. Oh, Jeffrey's off his medication again, Pat. Oh, I know, Diane, he's insane. Jeffrey's insane. Oh, okay. Here's what it was. Is both of you kind of detected that I was putting a ton of effort into this, and you were threatened by it? Both of you. So it just became easier to just buy into what my dad was telling you guys. And, oh, yes, Jeffrey is bipolar. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so annoying. It's like, yeah, I'm bipolar, but that doesn't mean I'm an invalid. <laughs> like, that's the thing. My dad is trying to... He, he wants me to be... He wanted me to be uh, incapacitated. And he was trying to convince everyone else I was as well. It's like, what, Dad, you're the one... Okay, never mind. All right, forget it. Look, here, here's the thing, is that it's, this is what gossip does to people. And see, the reason my Aunt Pat and my mom thought that what they were doing was okay, even though it wasn't, um, is because, oh, Jeffrey is talking about us on his podcast again. Oh, like, I like how I give the, the accents of my mom and Pat as if they're like British royalty, because they kind of act like it sometimes. But, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I know. I know. I know. I know. I love my Aunt Pat, but it's, it's more my mom. Like, my mom doesn't drink wine, but if she did, I guarantee you her pinky would be out But while well, she drinks it. But, all right, look. It, 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 it doesn't... Look, here's the thing. Is that we, I need to be nice to my mom. Can you just laugh? Mom, can you, can you just laugh? 
See, my mom, she just, these people, they don't know. I, I don't mean to say these people. I love my mom, but it, she, she's she got to have a sense of humor. It, she, I, I don't think, I don't think my mom has ever laughed at anything I've ever said. And not once. But, but, like, guys, why do you think my self-esteem is so low? I think, I think I got my dad to laugh at a couple things, maybe once, like, you know, maybe like in 2009. And then he realized that, you know, I'm, the, me, the chances of me getting a job are low and like a, a serious career. Uh, and he stopped laughing all of a sudden. <laughs> and uh, this is the same thing with my mom. All right. So look. I don't have, uh, like, open mic night. Hearing laughter would be confusing to me. If I were to ever say a joke, I'd be like, wait, what? People are laughing? I know, it would be so weird, guys. But anyways, okay, so look. All right, so, so I, look, I'm not, I'm not insane. I just have bipolar. See, Mark wants wants it to be a mental retardation. He would love for it to be mental retardation. He would love for me to be an incapacitated vegetable. You want to know why, guys? Do we ha do I have to explain why he didn't want me to be able to speak with with any kind of like you know trust, like meaning anybody would ever believe anything I said ever again? It's pretty obvious why, right? He was trying to convince everybody that I was mentally ill so that nobody would believe anything I said. And it, like, worked. He did it. He achieved his goal, didn't he? Uncle Tom, Aunt Pat, Mom, Lauren, Sarah. All of you. Molly didn't. Molly's awesome. Mary didn't either. You, you, you guys saw through the BS, and I appreciated it. Uh, everyone else didn't. <laughs> I don't know why. And, uh, so what it tells me is that everyone is with the devil. Sorry. Okay? And I don't mean to be rude, but obviously. Okay? And I'm annoyed about it, if you can tell. Sorry. Alright? Because you guys should be, have been the only people that love me. Now, like, I, I thought my mom at least loved me. She doesn't. Now nobody loves me on this planet. Like, not even my mom. Down to zero. Like, it, it was two people. Now it's down to zero. Well, no, it's down to one. My Uncle Joey loves me, but that's about it. Uh, so... Yeah, it's sad. So sorry if I'm, you know, being a little bit upset, okay? Alright, but I love, but I love my parents. And I even love my dad, you know? He helped build the microphone. I mean, I know that, you know... He, he's probably he probably deeply regrets helping me with it right because this is sort of the thing that right I mean you know I mean I I would be regretful okay but you know what uh how about we shift our attitudes out there you know what I mean and let's like start looking at this as a new beginning and an opportunity and as much as I I I, I really I need to be nicer to my mom Okay, but she also needs to be nicer to me. It's a two-way street, Diane. Right? You can't expect me to be nice to you when you're behind my back trashing me. To your aunt. Or to, to your sister. My aunt. To Sarah. To dad. To your friends. Oh, Jeffrey's off his medication again. You're your fake crying. What is with that? How old does how old of a person, mom, should should be doing hey, how old is somebody that does that usually? Yeah, they're they're six years old, seven years old, and I, like I'm not exaggerating, mom. And it, it, you, that that's it's absolutely pathetic. And I'm sorry, but you thinking that Jesus was gonna give you a, a, a position of power within this, mom, i I don't mean to be rude, but you gotta earn it. And you gotta like like I like I when I started this, I was a rap scallion. Okay, but I learned that that's just you can't do that. See, mom, you have not learned that. If someone gave you ever gave you power, you would immediately abuse it, like you did. I mean, it, it was you did. You immediately abused it. You edited my video. <laughs> you instantly abused it, thinking that you had the special privilege because you were my mom. It's like, uh, nope. That's not how it works. 
You got to earn everything. All right. You can't be born. It's just, oh, I'm Jeffrey. He's dead. It's like, look, I didn't No, You didn't even choose for me to be born. I'm pretty sure I was a mistake. Okay. I'm pretty sure I was a mistake. It, uh, my dad certainly treats me like it, and so does my mom. So, you can't even say you brought me into this world. It was a mistake, <laughs> okay? So, uh, you know what? Um, enough with the pride. And you don't earn any, you don't have any position just because you're my parents. In this in this world, in this new world, you gotta earn it, no matter who you are. And that goes for you and Aunt Pat. Okay, Aunt Pat, I'll tell you something. Look, I know you're mad at me, of course. But the thing is, is, you know, I mean, as, as loving as Aunt Pat was, is, you know, I... It, I, I asked you, Aunt Pat, to help me out a year ago. Remember that when my dad when my dad was being a maniac. Remember that. <laughs> Remember that, and I had to stay at your house. Um. You know, I asked you to maybe talk to my dad. You know, let's let, let's see if we can work this out. The guy's a maniac, right? He wants to destroy me, but I have to explain this to Aunt Pat in a way because I already know she thinks that I'm mentally ill, so I have to s explain this slowly to her. Like, all right, Aunt Pat, look, you know, I know my dad is, like, I had to say this, like, I wasn't, I didn't feel this at all, but I'm like, look, Aunt Pat, I love my dad very much, and I, he, he, he just, I believe he's just a little off base on a few things. I had to, like, I had to be slow about it. All that did was just make it worse, right? Like, oh, Jeffrey's saying things again. He must be crazy. Oh my goodness, I can't listen to him anyway. It, it, it's so it just it it worked, and because of that, now, you know, it, it it made it so that you sort of lost love for me, and then the devil kept convincing you that oh, Jeffrey's on a podcast and he's mentally ill, and right, so it's like, um. I just didn't have a chance and you, you didn't give me a chance. Neither of you did. Nobody gave me a chance. Nobody even gave me a chance. Nobody did that. That goes for everybody in, in, in this entire project. Nobody gave me a second chance. You guys gave me a chance. Elon gave me a chance, right? But nobody gave me a second chance. Don't, don't I deserve a second chance guys? Why, why don't I? What, what am I trying to say? I don't know what, what I was trying to say. I, I, I guess, Aunt Pat, maybe I shouldn't have brought you up and talked about it. Because I do love you, but Aunt Pat, I'm, I'm angry with you. I'm angry with you for doing exactly what my mom did and keeping the books to yourself. And, it, oh, Diane, this, this thing, this event, and it's going it, to... It, guys, Mom and Dad and Pat and everybody, I'm the event. I'm the thing. I'm the thing. and I, And I'm like... Not me personally, but like this event, me, you know, sandblasting trip actions and doing all this stuff and, and Jesus giving me all this information and doing the podcast. I'm, I'm the thing at this, not me personally, but this event, I, I got to stop saying it. Not me. It's my story is the event is what I'm trying to say. So. This is it, ladies. And, and you're disappointed by it. Why? Because you're not at the center of it like you thought you were going to be your entire lives. But the problem is, is you didn't do anything to earn it. I, I got a hold of the books. You guys were threatened by the fact that I kept giving things up and, 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 and going above and beyond, you know, going to church every day, right? You guys hated that. You hated the fact that I, I kind of started doing better than you at. Am I wrong? Well, the reason I started with such vigor and energy is because everything happened to me at trip actions. I'm like, wow, God's real. And God was showing me that, you know, the connection between what happened at trip actions and your grandmother's books. So I can't explain it to anybody because my dad's convinced everybody that I'm mentally ill. Everyone thinks I'm crazy, right? Right. Everybody in my family, everybody thought I was crazy. I'm sure they still do, but, uh, Everyone thought I was crazy, 
So I didn't even bother to explain it. I tried. Oh boy, did I. But nobody believed me. Okay. My mom did. But then I think I started pointing out some faults with her. And then I think it went out the window. And then all of a sudden I was back to being crazy. <laughs> oh, I, I, you know what I mean? It just, I, and, and, uh, it, it's, I, I love, I love my mom very much. Okay. And I even love my dad, but he doesn't love me. I mean, my dad, lo my, my, my dad's love for me is an absolute zero, not a zero. It's an absolute zero. So we're, we're just gonna skip that and just, but my mom does, I think truly love me. Um, you know, mom, I, I made the cake. I mean, come on. I, I, I can't tell you how many waffles I made over the summer with the, a waffle iron. And guess what, mom? I'm going to get my pizza stone and I'm going to make pizza tonight. Okay. And I'm going to do it for you. All right. So mom, I love you. I'm just, I'm mad. I'm mad at Pat. I'm mad at mom. I'm mad at everybody that I'm mad at Lauren, Lauren. You know, it's just, just why, Lauren? Because I, I used to, I wasn't very nice to Lauren and, and when we were kids. I know that, Lauren. But, I mean, haven't you noticed I've been trying to subtly apologize for it? I've been, I've been nothing but nice to you. And and then, like, I made some comment to you about, like, a bug or something. It was a joke, Lauren. And then you, like, go, like, Jeff, don't, don't it's like, Lauren, stop snapping at me. She she has this, like, vendetta against me now. It's, just, it's like, Lauren, stop it. Just be nice. I'm, I know I can be, but I didn't mean to. I was just trying to joke around. And then, and then Lauren, it's just, she's obviously, th so she, of course, bought into everything my dad was talking about. I warned her. Lauren, remember when I called you and explained the story to you? You didn't want to hear it. Of course, because all that was going through your head, the devil was right there going, don't listen to Jeff. He's crazy. His dad says he is. So it, that's <laughs> the devil voice I do. Just, I just, I, I make it sound super unreasonable and annoying, so that when when he he's on your shoulder saying super unreasonable, annoying things, you don't listen to him. That's why I use that voice. <laughs> All right, so that's the yeah. So, um, anyway, so Lauren, so that you got it. Let's just be nice, okay? Because we we got to get these books out, and mom and Pat, we got to get the tapes out. And uh, there is there is no coincidence here that uh, Jesus had me become an expert at recording audio and music and think why because well he wants me to take the tapes and uh, you know transcribe them to digital format so we can distribute it to people all over the world and I know my mom my mom thinks my mom's she's so funny she she gets so mad when I say this stuff. She, she just, she, she, my mom thinks that she says this and it's, it's valid. It's not valid. She goes, oh, Jeffrey, the devil will stop you from doing this. It's like, mom, no, not, he won't. If, if God wants me to do it, oh, Jeffrey, it's from the devil. Okay, mom, but what if it's not from the devil? Like, mom, not everything is from the devil. Not everything that I do or that is from the devil. She just wants everything to be from the devil with me. And I don't know why. What is that? Like, like, mom, I'm going to go grocery shopping. Oh, Jeffrey, that's from the devil. Just stay home. Uh, no, but I need eggs. Jeffrey, just stay home. Okay, mom. That's, that's as reasonable as my mom gets. <laughs> it's not, I'm just joking. But everything is from the devil when it comes out of my, like, that's every idea that I have. Like, to come out to California was, of course, from the devil. To get a car was, of course, from the devil. It's like, Mom, then what can I do? What can I do that's not from the devil? Mom, do you have an answer? And the answer is to get a job. Mom, I've been trying to get a job, but the, but the devil's been stopping me from getting a job. So, I mean, I can't get a job. Okay, so, I mean, what am I going to do? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So I just sit here and just play Minecraft until I die. Is that what it is? I'll just do that. All right, that's fine. Okay. All right, so we, so what, so let's, okay. So mom and Pat, we gotta, 
we got to do something about these books. We got to do something about the tapes. And let me tell you something. This is the whole reason I did all of this was just so I could literally, I, I can't tell you how excited I am to get people actual content. Like meaning I don't do content. I just come on here and talk and here I am floating around a block world for kids. All right. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is I want to get these books out. That's real content. That's real stuff that your grandmother wrote and uh, changed my life. And it's going to change everyone else's. Because, hey, everybody that doesn't have access to the books, I got bad news for you. But it, don't worry, I'll, I'll spin it around real quick. So hold on. So everyone that doesn't have access to my great-grandmother's books right now, the bad news is, is you're on your way to hell. But the good news is, is that my mom and Pat are going to smarten up and they're going to figure out a way to distribute the books to everybody. Okay? And they're, and they're going to be totally cool with me uh, getting the tapes and then transcribing them to digital format so we can get them out to everybody. All right, I can build the website, I can build the infrastructure, I can do whatever it takes. So not only can I do the transcription of the audio to digital format, but I can make the means of doing it as well through, through a website. I mean, I don't know, that kind of sounds like I'm the perfect guy for this. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. So I'm super excited to get these books and tapes out to people. Mom. It's going to change the world. Don't we want to do that? As long as it's Jesus' will. But I can tell you right now, Jesus wouldn't be having me say this and unless he felt the same way. All right? So, all right, I'm sorry for being so harsh on you. I'm sorry, Mom, for yelling at you. And you know what? I shouldn't have done that. I should. It's something a son should never do. I, I just honestly... I ask Jesus all the time, like, Jesus, this this kills me yelling at my mom like this. This is this this kills me. Right? Because my mom never see me yelling at my dad is sort of justice. Because that guy was a an uh, he was a, a an irate maniac with zero self control. That that's who my dad was when I was younger. So yelling at my dad doesn't feel so bad, you know? But yelling at my mom does. And I just felt really bad about it, but I just, I'm like, mom, you don't understand how important this is. You don't under, like, she didn't understand what was going on, even at her own, own house. Like, my mom was seeing everything I was doing while I was at her house. She's like, how did Jeffrey do everything? It's like, mom, I tried to explain all this stuff. You were telling me I was crazy every three minutes. All right, so, like, it, that's how. It's just you believed that I was crazy, so you stopped asking questions and you didn't pay attention. That's how I got all this stuff done, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> And, uh, so the thing is, is mom, it's, if you want to make up for that and you should feel bad about that, you, we should feel some guilt about that. And I know you won't because I'm asking you to, but um, you should. Okay. Okay. I don't feel, I don't, I don't No, Here's what I'm asking you to do. Don't feel guilty about it because it was God's will. He wanted you to kind of be ignorant to it. Now, is that a compliment? Probably not, but we just accept it. And we just accept God's will, right? But mom, you will have, mom and Pat, all hope is not lost. You want to know why? Because lucky you, I did all the hard work. All right? I set this place up. Not really. I mean, I, I did, right? But I did all the garbage that no one else wanted to do. Even you. I did all the garbage neither one of you would have wanted to do. No offense. Okay? So you're welcome, A. Okay, that's, you're welcome, Okay. Um, but the second is let's stop with this immature attitude of, I'm not qualified because I am, it's nothing personal. It's just, I am, I put in the work and yes, it took me less time than you maybe, but I put, I, I, I gave up my life for Jesus. I, I'm not married. I, I don't have, I gave up everything, all my comforts, everything. I destroyed my family. I told the truth. I destroyed friendships. I destroyed everything Jesus wanted me to destroy. And I built up uh, well, nothing so far. I made a car, I guess, but I didn't even make the car. I just wet sanded it. Guys, I haven't done anything yet. All right. But the, but the point is, is I'm ready to. Okay. And if you can't see that, then you're, you're, you're not seeing reality correctly. 
Um, so the whole reason I did this was so that I could transpose the tape, the tapes, my great grandmother's tapes, and help get the books out. And I, I guys, I want everyone to be as as happy as I feel right now. Because I feel really happy because it's like, no matter what happens, man, I like we're ready to go. I know that we're ready for this new world, whatever it is. I don't know what it is. I mean, my goodness, if, if four years ago, I didn't even like go to church. I didn't, I just figured, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, who knew she, Jesus was this involved? I mean, it's so neat. So mom and Pat, instead of being angry about this, just be happy that you didn't have to go through the garbage and the humiliation that I went through. Okay, because this this uh, information about you two it uh, pales in comparison to the garbage I, I I admitted about myself, and um, it pales in comparison to some of our other friends uh, out here. Okay, so don't worry about it. It was a slap on the wrist. Okay, I mean obviously we pay penance, but mom, don't forget. You not showing Sarah and I the books. Mom, zero excuse for that. All right, it was very cowardly for the, right? The only reason you, you didn't want to show us is because you thought we you were going to be crazy. See, you, or, or you thought we were going to think you were crazy. But mom, what, if you were so concerned about that, why were you telling everyone I was crazy? You know, I mean, don't you think that's like super hurtful to do to your own son? If right, like, like, here's what I'm trying to say, mom. My mom cares about what other people think so much that she's so worried about being seen as crazy. Then, so it must be super painful to you, mom, right? That thought of loss of reputation, right? Then how come you were doing that to me? Gossiping about me. Telling everybody, telling, telling Uncle Joey, talking about me to all your friends. Why was that necessary? Right? Because obviously it's a, it's a fear of yours. So much so that you withheld the, your grandmother's books from your own children. You were worried if we were going to think you were crazy. So the question is, is why were you imparting that punishment on me purposely? If it's that hurt harmful to you perceptively you, you know what i mean so mom it, it, what i'm trying to say is you, it was sort of of a form of torture in a form of evil where you behind my back were gossiping about me on purpose trying to convince every because you know i wasn't crazy you knew that of course you did but you wanted everyone else to think I was crazy. Question is, is why? Why know why? I know, of course I know why. It's because you, you thought you were going to be this person. But, mom, you don't want to be this person. Do you want this, this kind of scrutiny? I mean, I, I'm getting scrutiny from my own biological parents. And my family. I mean, that's how bad this is. I'm getting scrutiny. I, there's nobody that supports me or likes me or that, you know what I mean? It's just all negativity from you people who are too jealous. You, jealousy from my own parents. Unreal. Where's the support? I don't know. Uh, but I'm not here to make people jealous. I mean, I'm here to, we're trying to get the books out. I'm trying to get the tapes out. I have the equipment, the tools, and the skills to do it. The equipment and tools are the same thing, Jeff. You just said that. Okay, whatever. Uh, but I'm trying to say I have everything I need to do. I have a computer. I have, uh, I'm able to code things. Like I have audio recording equipment, like super high quality stuff, like studio level. I, you know, and of course, I know Aunt Pat, and I, and I know my mom and Aunt Pat. I know them. They're so stubborn about all this. Jeffrey, you, you, you know, Jesus, like they, they're, they're skeptical. Like, even though I've been doing this recording music guys for 20 years, they still don't trust me. Like, 
Jeffrey, we'll let God decide. Like, Mom, shut up. Okay, Mom, just shut up. Okay, just, just, Jesus put me on this earth. Mom, you're not in charge of this. How, again, Mom, I have to ask you, how many companies have you taken down? How many companies? Mom, you call L.L. Bean every once in a while, but you have, have, have you, did you take him down? Did you take L.L. Bean down, Mom? Did you find out that I'm sure they're doing something with taxes or the defrauding investors or, or poisoning their, their their clientele like Jamba Juice? Does L.L. Bean do any of that, Mom? Okay, so, no. Okay, so, it, you didn't take him down. You just order, like, you know, if flannel lined jeans from them everyone once in a while but that's not taking anybody down okay mom you're not gonna save a planet by ordering flannel okay from ll bean okay you gotta ruffle some feather okay so what i'm trying to say is that mom <laughs> jeffrey i also shop at marshall's okay mom sorry this is my mom she always ruins every joke because of that All right. Look. Okay. So, mom. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> My mom and I could never be a comedy duo. Just, it would never work out. I would have to walk off stage all the time in frustration. It just would never work out. <laughs> I know. I love my mom. I love my mom. I know. It's just, I think she likes to annoy me on purpose. I do. I do. I do. I do. I feel like she likes to add complications just a little bit here and there. She likes to add confusion. She likes to add extra steps. Like, like, ma, she should, st I don't know what she's doing, but she should start writing, um, like, I'm just, she should join, uh, she just start writing laws and stuff. Just, like, unnecessary. I don't know. Whatever. whatever I don't know. I don't know what she should be doing. But, Mom, but I love you. I, I think, I, what I would say is everything will be fine. But let's just get a better attitude about this. All right? I'm not the worst guy in the world. I'm trying to, I mean, my goodness. My own mother doesn't trust me for this. It's like, okay, thanks, Mom. Uh, wow. Uh, but, look, God chose me for this, Okay. But mom, I'm sorry. I trust you a little less. Like it, you, it's okay to not trust me. I'm just saying, based on your kind of irritability, your immaturity, and you're just you, you, you're not spiritually. I mean, you you are. We we've seen a backslide, a, a Diane, mom. Okay, we've seen a backslide, especially since all this started with me because you started seeing me kind of work really hard at it, and then all of a sudden we lose zeal for it or whatever happened mom right so so that's disappointing but the point is is that's why you allowed the devil in you see what i'm saying so be, because of the fact that you were so you know whatever i i, I don't jealous isn't the word you were threatened by me threatened Jeffrey, we've been in this longer than you have. We, you know, you've only been doing this for a couple of years. Mom, it doesn't matter. It's not, that's not how God works. Heaven, he doesn't, you could, I mean, if God wanted it, he would make it, you know, he, he has, he has made it so that right before people die, like, let me ask you a question, mom, Fred, Okay. Your grandmother's husband, Fred. Now, he was not portrayed very positively in the books, was he? No, he wasn't. He, was, he, he sounded a lot like like Dad, or, or, right? Just sort of in his own world, right? Not really paying attention. Not a lot of love there, right? Um, But Fred, I think, was keeping his hands to himself. So that's that's... Fred has that on dad okay so that's good all right so that's good news all right but uh the thing is though is that right before fred died like that's the thing is our, our, your grandmother was trying her entire life to bring fred her husband to heaven the guy wanted nothing to do with it yeah he went to church but he didn't really want to do what it took 
my great grandmother was the only person who knew. I mean, he had no idea the gold mine. I mean, it, he totally just like I, whatever. I don't know why he didn't see it. He he didn't see her passion. He didn't see her love for Jesus. Like he just called her religious crazy, and. That's because it maybe is perceived like that, but you guys think I'm crazy. Actually, what it is, is, whoa, there's a whole new world out there, and uh, we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. No pun intended. Okay? And my great-grandmother was the first person to see this. Like, whoa, Jesus is super involved, super cares, and it, but this is what you got to do. You, but you, it's not that easy. It's 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 just you you got you have to give up things. You have to sacrifice. Um, and you know, mom, I love you. But you not giving up anything for Lent was kind of a red flag for me. And you go, you just go, oh Jeffrey, mind your own business. Yeah, mom, but I need to help you get to heaven. Okay. I know dad won't make it. I know that sounds negative, but it's it's Jesus is uh, giving me that mercy so I don't waste any time with him. Dad is he's a lost cause, but you're not. Okay? And I want you are coming to heaven, mom. So are you, Aunt Pat. I don't care how much you guys hate me right now. It doesn't matter. All right? Both of you are coming to heaven. Okay? But, but it requires a shift in attitude and a view of me that is more positive. You, you Please. Okay? I'm not the devil. You want to know how I know that? Is because I'm not the one who's gossiping about anyone behind their back. Yes, you are, Jeffrey. You're going on your podcast. Mom, who's gossiping? I'm talking to you right now. I'm not gossiping about anybody. I, how many times did I try to give you the freaking link to the podcast? How many times? Countless. Mom, listen to the podcast. I talk about you and it's important. I want you to come to heaven. Oh, Jeffrey, you're crazy. Okay, mom. Then this isn't going to work, is it? You know what I mean? And then all you did, like, you, I'm like, mom, listen to the podcast. No, Jeffrey, you talk about us. Yes, I do. And there's a reason. <laughs> So we have to do it this way, Mom, and this was way more embarrassing, isn't it? This could have been done uh, before this was public, right? We could have done this behind the scenes if we tried, but no, I'm crazy. Okay, whatever. All right, look. All right, so so here's the thing. Is we got it. We seriously have to work together to get these tapes out. And every second that goes by, Mom, another soul goes to hell, and it's, at this point, it's your fault because we got to get these tapes out, and we need help. All right, don't I don't want my voice out there. I want my great grandmother's voice out there. Yeah, I want I just want to do something, guys, that's not dog walking. I want to do something. If that's my only job opportunity, guys, I didn't succeed. All right. I want to do something else that's meaningful. I don't care what I do. I just want something. I want to go back to my life the way it was before trip actions. That's my goal. Because of, because of my mom, I had to do all this garbage because she didn't show us the books. When we were kids, if she did, I wouldn't have ever needed to even pick up a stupid computer. Oh my God. Yeah, I get, I'm getting mad for a second. Right, let me calm down. Let me calm down. Okay. So, mom, it's good to see my mom is distrustful of me because she knows I'm right, obviously. All right. So, so the thing is, is, man, I can't wait for snow, guys. I can't wait for the winter. I'm a winter kind of guy. I real, I just realized that. I just realized that after the second I moved to uh, California, I'm like, wait, I like winter too much. I got to go back. I got to go to Montana. I, I don't like this place anymore. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so I, all right. My, my mom's saying maybe Jeff, it's best that you come home then. I agree. That's what I want. I want to come home. I would love that. I, but the problem is, is that dad's there and I, I'm not going to deal with him. I, I, I don't, I, I don't want to be around that guy anymore. He's impossible. And, and I'm not, maybe, maybe I'm being unfair, but I, I, it's not my job to make sure that my, my dad is, is, uh, like, it, it, 
I guess I guess the, the the question is is how much effort do we want to put into into a person who literally have has attempted to move heaven and earth to prove that I shouldn't be trusted. Why why should why should I prioritize somebody like that? You you know what I'm saying? I mean, my mom is a victim of brainwashing, obviously. And so is Aunt Pat, and so is Uncle Tom, right? But I don't consider them bad people. They just are a victim of brainwashing, so they just sort of believe it, and then they act accordingly, right? That's the power of gossip. My dad is aware of this. What a piece of garbage. Um, and and I, I would just say, what I would say is is that I cannot, I, I don't want to live in the same house as somebody who's that close to the devil. I, th I think that's what we're trying to say. He's violent. He has no self-control. Um, It just wouldn't be wise. So I would love to come home, and I would love to. My mom makes the house beautiful. She makes it smell beautiful. She always, she's always baking. I would love to come home. But I, the only condition is if dad is not there. And here's what I can tell you, mom. I can do anything dad can do. And I can do it better. The only thing I can't do is cut down trees. That, th that, that I'm staying away from. I'm not strong enough. That I can't do. But I, I also don't want to. I like trees too much. And I say that. I could do it, <laughs> obviously. But I, I could do it. I just don't want to. All right, because it just makes me too. It just makes me too nervous. I mean, the the, the tree's gonna come down. It's gonna hit the house. I don't know. I could figure it out, but it just, it's just not my thing right now. I'll get I'll get into it once I get a house, or once I need to build a house, and all I have is trees surrounding me. Well, then that changes real quick. I'll be able to cut down anything. It'll be fine. But I just right now I've never done it. Uh, but uh, but mom, I can do anything Dad can do, and I, and I'll live with you and. Uh, we can, uh, we'll have a great time. And and I'm serious. I want to get out of here. I hate this hellhole of a place. I hate Silicon Valley. I hate my neighbors. Oh, no, I love my neighbors. Some of them. I love Leah. I love Alexa. And I love, I love Lucas next to me. And I love the kids next door. The, uh, the kids next door. Sounds like the parents are, sounds like the dad is a li little bit of a hothead over there next door here. Uh, I don't like that. Let's be nice to our kids, huh? Let's not, if we have an issue with them, uh, we don't lose our temper. Their buddy next door, all right? You're, they're mad. They were mad about something with me, and then they take it out on their kids. And it, they were mad about something positive that happened with with me. They were m so mad about that, so th so they take it out on their kids. The guy next door. Uh that's a good. That's pretty low, buddy. I mean that you're aware of that, right? That doesn't. Look what look very good. You know what I mean? All right, I'm not trying to be rude, but this is why I want to get out of here. All right. So, mom, if that's an invitation to come home, I would love that. But you're the one I don't have a phone. I'm not going to call you. You are going to have to reach out to me. We're going to have to be brave here and we're going to have to reach out to me because we have to get these books, these tapes everything out to people all right and i'll let you do the deciding but i can do the work all right if it's really in your hands which it's at mom i'm sorry to say it's not okay because how does it go from snow to okay whatever it's minecraft jeff it's not supposed to make sense you're right all right uh but the, but anyways um I think I think we we understand each other here. This is it's almost like mom. It's almost like imp, it's not even personal. It's just it's just like Jesus put me on this planet to kind of be the battering ram and just sort of I I kind of I'm kind of a I just kind of don't care and I just really want to power through and get this done. And that attitude of mine has uh, well it made a lot of people angry, but I mean hey. Uh, do you want to, do you want to do this? And uh, nobody, mom, I've, I've, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've said on my podcast, 
hey, anybody who's mad at me right now, uh, if, you know, Pete included and anyone else, does anyone want to do this? I, any, I will, like, mom, I can't, I put it out there. I'm like, mom, just send me an email, everybody. Send me an email if you would rather, if you think you would do a better job. And uh, so far, uh, nobody has responded. So by that silence, mom, I can make, I can come to the conclusion that no one else wants to do this. Why? Because it's crippling responsibility. And you're, you're right. Like, you, like I have to prove to people that molest children that I'm good enough to represent them. Like, it's like, uh, okay. I mean, I, I, this, we're seeing that a lot in this neighborhood and, uh, it's, it's just like, I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's, it might be time to leave with, you know what I mean? Like I, I, so it's the, the thing is, is, uh, is, uh, we, we, the, I just, I want to say that I'm, I'm ready to go mom. And if you're and I'm Pat, we got to get these books out. Lauren, you're going to be part of this Molly, of course, Mary, especially she's going to be, she's gonna be awesome, Mary. And, uh, and, uh, Sarah, if you want to join this too, but Sarah's too busy counting pills at, at her office or something. Sarah, stop with the pharmacy stuff. Can you stop it? Sarah, can you stop? Sarah, can I just be honest with you? Look, here's the thing about being a pharmacist is you're like a, you're like a, uh, you're like a pawn for the, for the big pharmaceutical companies. They just pay you a lot and they, they know that you don't really do all that much and you're not really that necessary. Cause I mean, no, nothing personal, Sarah. But that's where your pride comes from. That's why you're so proud. That's why you tried to prove I had bipolar too. Remember, Sarah, you were like, Jeff, prove to me you don't have bipolar. Hey, Sarah, you're a doctor. Why would you ever say something like that? Like, it's, uh, Jeff, prove to me you don't have bipolar. Uh, is that how it works? I don't think so. Uh, uh, but look, <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know, Sarah. All right. All right. Um, but, uh, you know, look. All right. Let's just, Sarah, I forgive you for that. But boy, was that really, that was really confusing. I'm going to be real honest, Sarah. But, but anyways, so I love, I love my sister. I do. It's just, she doesn't love me, obviously. And Sarah, I hope that change. I hope me doing all this changes that. I mean, maybe not what I maybe not what I just said. Maybe that made things worse. But Sarah, like, come on, like that was that was proof to me that you hate me, and I don't know why. Why? Because of Chelsea? Is that why? Yeah, probably. Because Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. Never mind. Sorry, I shouldn't be bringing up names. But yeah, that's what it is, right, Sarah? Basically. Yeah, Jeff, I'm jealous because all my friends liked you and they didn't like me. Sarah, stop being a lesbian. Stop it. Scissors in the drawer. I can't tell you how many times I said that on the podcast. Okay, Sarah, they don't make enough waffle waffle stompers. Okay, we we gotta we can't be like we can't. We, <laughs> we need to save those shoes for the construction workers. Okay, Sarah. And I know Sarah's like flannel, the flannel joke, Jeff, coming up. Yes, Sarah, because it's fall. I'm sure you're wearing it. Flannel in your Subaru Forester. Or she doesn't drive a Forester, but she does wear flannel. So, Sarah. Okay, look. Scissors in the... <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is inappropriate. Not, not good for YouTube. This spit everywhere. Not good for YouTube. This is going to get me kicked off. Or my mom's gonna edit my videos again. I don't know something. Uh, but 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 look, Sarah, we gotta we gotta keep those. <laughs> Jeff, more scissor jokes. Yes, that's all I got. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, Sarah. Like I'm not saying I don't get it. Believe me, if I was a girl, I'd be a lesbian as well. I know that's a very egocentric, I know position. But look, Sarah, look. I get it. Men are, I'm not into men either. I, I totally get it. Like I get it. All right. But the thing is, is like, we're not that bad. Like, it's just, you, you know what I mean? Like, or don't get married. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to get married to anybody. Are you kidding me? Like, who's going to, who's going to marry me or, or who also, I feel like it's just going to just be way too much of a risk. Like, yo, know, Jeff's going to be yelling at me all the time. Like, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm only like this on my podcast. 
in in when I'm doing Minecraft videos because it's just I just I don't know man I just it's just nice it's like cathartic I get to come on here and yell at everyone I used to work with it's awesome but I'm not gonna do that to my wife why would I do that I see her facial reactions when I'm yelling at her I'm not gonna want <laughs> I don't want to see that this is why this is great this is why it's turning me into a psychopath because I don't see anybody's reaction to this this is why this is great uh except oh, except when people knock over my compost bin yeah that that was a reaction wasn't it <laughs> i still i'm still laughing that that this, you guys knocked that over because you were mad that we're trying to expose pedophiles like you're so angry about it we're trying to bring pedophiles to justice that they hate compost all of a sudden like i can't believe that can anyone believe that no one can believe that no it j but it's real guys it really happened i know crazy Hey guys, you want to go make Elsa's house? Let's go do that right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So Sarah, I mean, do, Sarah, you should be a part of this. Honestly, I really want you to. I love my sister. Sarah, remember how sweet of a girl, little girl Sarah was? I know Sarah was a, she was the best. Sarah was so sweet, you know? Sarah, I love you so much. And she, she, my sister has a great sense of humor. It's just, I feel like she became a pharmacist and then it went away. And then all of a sudden she demands to be taken seriously. It's like, Sarah, you went to Yukon. No one's going to take you seriously. All right. It, just accept it. Okay. Just, just, just count the pills and then just be happy. You made us, you made more money than I ever made counting pills pills and they just handing them to people here's your pills i counted them for you okay but here and you get one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars. it's not fair and i made one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars, and i got i got psychologically tortured on purpose it's so annoying i it's like unbelievable i should have went to pharmacy school All right, whatever. I don't care. Anyways. Okay, we're going to make Elsa's house. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Sarah. Okay, I don't know. So, Sarah, you're cool. Everyone's cool. By the way, guys, this is exactly how easy it is to break apart ice. You just punch it and it disintegrates. But don't try it. Well, I know a couple people who should try it, but I'm not going to say who because I want to stay alive. I got to stay alive because, well, I, the thing, the thing, here we go. I'm just, here, I made a house. This is Elsa's house. Okay. We're just going to sit here and wait. <laughs> I'm going to wait for my mom to show up. Jeff, sorry for, you know, uh, convincing everyone that you're crazy. Sorry about all that, but don't worry. We're going to make it up to you and we're going to make it so we can transpose those videos and send them out to the planet. Thanks, mom. I'll grab my, I'll grab my recording equipment and I'll come back to Connecticut or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Okay. Can we just please bring everything back to the way it was in the nineties? This is all I'm trying to do. Okay, I want Doug, Rugrats, Hey Arnold. I want one desktop computer per household. I want dial-up internet again. Oh my goodness. Okay, we can't we can't download porn if we're on dial-up internet, guys. All right, we got to stop. Okay. All right, look. Jesus wants me to not even bring that stuff up anymore. It is that big. It is that black, that much of a black hole. <clears throat> it is. Sorry. All right. But I'm serious. <laughs> okay. Because we can't do any damage with, with 56K internet. It, it's, it, it, it's, oh, you can, but it'll be, it'll be slower. Okay. Well, you, okay. That's true, guys. You got me on that one. But like, look. I'm just going to wait. Okay, you guys are right. So cool. Let's just stay here. Let's just wait. I'm just going to wait. I can't do anything. I don't have any money. So I'm just going to wait here in this little hole. <laughs> okay. My ice hole. 
Okay, guys, or just let's open up a window. Okay, guys, so I'm just gonna wait here and look out this window until somebody, just like Elsa. Okay, I'll play the new Flown Glory version of it, and then, uh, well, basically, you know, let it go song. And then maybe if no one's listening, I'll play the actual Disney version because that's okay. Uh, I look, guys, you know what? I, I just, I don't care. I actually don't care. I just, I just realized I don't care. Oh, Jeff, do you care? I do not. I do not care. I stopped caring. I always say this, but I actually mean it this time. Okay, guys, I have to expand the, the ice house. Okay. All right, guys. Yeah. I don't care. Okay. So, mom and dad, or not dad, but mom and Pat and Uncle Tom, we, it is our responsibility to get these books out. I can do it. We just got to get the tapes. We just got to, okay, you don't trust me. Okay, then I can't do anything. Okay, there's, you can't, you don't trust me, then there's nothing I can do. If you don't trust me, there's nothing I can do, and I'm just going to be sitting in my ice hole for the rest of my life. Okay, well, this is a bummer. My own parents don't, my own family doesn't trust me for anything. Okay, I'm just going to sit down then. I'm just going to sit down. I'm just going to sit down. I'm going to sit here and mope. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. I don't care. All right, Mom, bye. All right, fine. I'll see you in Thanksgiving, I guess. All right, ah, bummer.